Well hi there, um, today I want to make a video about the true Bride of Christ. Um, just want to give you some pointers into what the true Bride of Christ really is. Let's first of all um, look at the groom who was Jesus Christ and this of course is a parable many Christians today get mixed up in these things that the church really isn't the bride because that would be um, a weird sexual type of thing but what they don't realize is that spiritually um, this is what God is looking for a subservient, obedient, humble, trusting bride in the groom, the Messiah, Yeshua Jesus Christ who actually died on the cross for us now the true reaction of a bride seeing um, her groom go through such a thing, in other words her head, um, is, is a bit to see her creator going through this. Remember in the Psalms it says, <clears throat> and this is speaking of course to God's people, that your husband is your maker. So that any um, true woman of God will actually realise the great significance of her husband in her life. And um, basically, not only that, to try to emulate, understand him, love him, serve him, um, share in his works, help him, have empathy towards him, and so on, etc., etc. But um, in, in this instance, we see the apostle who's closest to the Messiah, who's called John. Apparently, he was the only one who actually witnessed almost all the way through um, the sufferings that Christ went through and that man hardly left Christ's side you know if, if he could have stayed with him I think through all um, the entire epic story um, that happened to Yeshua during his um, crucifixion um, but indeed Messiah told John that uh, behold this is your mother and he was speaking about Mary um, who of course had um, great favour on by the way uh, how, how a true woman she, she got married and that she did conceive and bear a child and it was through the Holy Spirit and not through any sexual use. Many of the um, absolute um, anti, let's just call them, um, some people from I think the black Israelite community believe that um, God had sex with Mary. That's how um, fleshly these people are. Um, the same people that think that uh, Jesus Christ was a, a Negro. Jesus Christ was not a Negro or a Caucasian or any of these um, racialist terms that we come um, come up against today. But he was a, a Jewish Hebrew and um, the Hebrews have actually a varied um, um, tones of skin. But culturally he was a Hebrew. He wasn't African or he wasn't European but he was Hebrew and uh, in other words when we are born again you know we should conform our own culture to that which is biblical to that which is our master Yeshua because our master Yeshua certainly observed the complete entire Torah and um, in the new covenant Jeremiah prophecies that the true bride of Christ born again Israel and those that are brought in um, to the actual um, sheepfold will um, be called in grafted branches and, and, and actually will um, be called um, brides of, of, of Christ Okay, will be called the body of Christ the church but it's not like the church we know today the church we know today basically uh, thinks that if it dresses up like a bride if it looks nice, like the way a bride should dress up at a wedding, outwardly, wear beautiful clothes outwardly, adorn itself with jewels and makeup outwardly, but inwardly be like ravening wolves, inwardly be like witches that are just using these things to manipulate the hearts and minds of people, rather than having beauty in the inside, which the Apostle Paul writes about, which is about the true bride of Christ, which is um, not self-serving, which is willing to self um, serve others, to put others before itself, herself, and um, and therefore to serve her Lord, to be a handmaiden to Christ. 
that's another term of actually um, discerning. It's probably a better way actually um, that than the bride, a handmaiden, is is someone who's actually lower <coughs> lower than the bride uh, herself. A handmaiden would be like a handmaiden to Abraham's wife, um, Sarah. Of course, um, Abraham had uh, uh, some ch children with, of course, but that's a different that's a different story. But of course, that that handmaiden wasn't humble. She actually um, it said that she actually lifted herself up, and then she was hoity, um, just like uh, many of the people in the Middle East are today. That they think they have a right to to God's land again. Israel's likened to, to the bride of Christ. <clears throat> in fact, in the book of Revelation, the twelve uh, tribes of Israel uh, are very much uh, regarded and likened to the uh, the seed of the woman, and uh, of course that woman is the bride of Christ, and that woman is Israel. Not only the nation Israel, but the people Israel. So we know what the nation Israel is. It's actually been brought forth. That's one of the um, what you might call political or fleshly prophecies that the prophet spoke about. But certainly the new covenant is a spiritual covenant with the born again Israel. And that's Israel within Israel. And the name for that is Jeshurun. That that means the Israel within Israel. The elect among the elect of God. Okay, In other words, the born again of Israel. Or even the born again of the church. Because the church today again is fleshly. And um, how do you again discern the bride of Christ in the church? Well, what I was just explaining earlier... Um, is that um, outwardly um, the church adorned its, adorns itself um, like a bride it looks like a bride it kind of acts like a bride you know but at the same time spiritually it's not really been born again it's not been converted and it can't actually it's not actually taught to hold on to the ways of God the church don't actually teach that what the church teaches is that you should hold on to the ways of the elders and pastors which is fine if these elders and pastors have been elect of God, but sadly, most, in most cases today, um, the, the entire church um, is just being um, compromised in so many ways, and um, that I just really can't go into right now because I probably don't have enough um, memory on this this phone to actually go into make a, a video such as that. But um, I was very prompted this morning to make a video about the Bride of Christ, about who she really is. And um, basically the, the, the Bride, uh, like a true Bride, is always very, very... Um, well, he, she, she, she looks at her husband and she wants to suffer as he suffers. In fact, she wants to put herself in the place of her husband. You know, she hates the fact that her husband is suffering and she, she even wants to put her place herself in his place if it was God's will which of course none, none of us could do that for Christ only Christ could go to the cross and suffer in a way he did um, to actually die for the sins of mankind it, it had to happen but you see how much it hurt it must have really hurt not only the true apostles <clears throat> but anybody that, that knew Christ at that time to see such a righteous man die as he did must have been very very tough on any man who had a conscience and even though the Pharisees of course were threatened by him um, basically um, I guess their position not only that but their integrity was threatened by Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ saw right through them and uh, they saw that they were actually worshipping devils and um, basically most of them were in it just for the, the money and so on many of them were just puppets of Rome basically um, including the, the king of Israel, Herod at that time, another puppet of Rome. And today it's not really that much different. You know, when we look around and um, we see that the ten kings will be uh, giving their power to the beast. So again, if the beast is, is, is like a Roman empire or, or some kind of end time empire such as that, headed by uh, Rome, then these ten kings will just be giving their power to the beast. And um, But there's been many beasts, of course, um, since uh, the book of Daniel all these beasts were given um, identities were given to Daniel which were actually kingdoms and empires that came up from Babylon, Medo-Persia Grecia, Rome 
and uh, to the to the beast we see today, which is actually the Islamic Empire. That is a real ex Islamic Empire. It's had actually control of the Middle East many times, um, been wrestled away from them um, sometimes by uh, the uh, Knights Templars, I, I, su I suppose you could say. But um, at the end of the day, you know, who, who, who does Obama work for? You know, is he working for the Knights Templars or is he working for the Muslims or, or what? Well, when you actually discover that most of the bankers today who, who live in Switzerland and um, it's, a, it's a known Knights Templar territory, well, their religion now is actually uh, Islam. So they're making this obviously now look at, they want to make this a world religion, Islam, because it's um, basically, um, you know, birth rate across China. Um, in fact, most of the world now, I'd say probably the number one religion in the world now has to be Islam. Um, behind that, possibly Roman Catholicism. and um, But we know that Rome has to be destroyed. That's another prophecy in the book of Revelation. So again, this is a rebuke to, first of all, the fake bride of Christ, again, who adorns herself and who is actually the harlot of, of, of Babylon, um, inwardly is, is, is just a snake, is, is, is just a, um, there's poison on her lips, there's lies, um, she's very deceiving, she wants to exalt herself above all, um, that is who is really posing as the bride of Christ today, but she'll be found out and she'll be destroyed with fire, and God will use uh, the beast and the ten kings to execute judgment on her okay so that's what we read about in the book of revelation while of course uh, i would say that god's people will be protected but we we have seen many many deaths and, and we know that um right throughout the, the two thousand years that, that christ has uh give us this dispensation that many true christians have died for their faith and um we also should be prepared for that to die in such a way as our master has, has also suffered and died and just to realize that if we have to go through that then we truly are the bride of Christ and that our, our reward is Jesus Christ himself as the groom and our place in heaven as his, his uh, I guess, hand servants as his people um, forever and ever that will be, he is our reward okay and I um, just want to encourage you with this today um, again, I, I just don't like talking about the rapture. There's just too many people always mentioning the rapture in every video they make. People love it. I know that they get lots of thumbs up about it, but I, I'd rather just focus on um, totally itself, what's going on just now in the world. The amount of Christians that are suffering and dying today is a reality. They haven't been raptured. But again, again, the point is about that, the teaching that Paul gave us in Thessalonians is that... Uh, you know that you shouldn't be afraid to die for Christ because basically you will be in that final uh, rapture when Jesus Christ returns that the dead shall rise first and um, again I'll, I'll just go through that teaching so I've mentioned time and time again um, for people um, just to give people a good grounding in the truth to give them a real grounding in faith and to realize that their lives have to be conformed to the likeness of the true bride of Christ you have to really humble yourself and to get the Holy Spirit and to get the understanding and to get the, the commandments written on your heart and mind if you don't have that I really really don't think you're going to be raptured anyway when it happens and I really think you should have to prepare your soul to die really as a, as a bride has truly died like the way that all the apostles died um, even the torture that the, the John went through himself who was the, the closest one to Christ that he was bo boiled alive in oil and he still didn't die, but that must have been very torturous on the flesh. So please, um, please let us realize this and um, really just seek Christ today and his power and his authority over the principalities in this world to show people that Yahweh is the true God and he is the one to serve. Thank you for listening.